my hotel room. I'm on a, I call it a stupid layover, but it's like a very stupid layover, the way I got this trip. Like, so basically, you know how, like, today is the 22nd, so like two days ago, we had like a Nor'easter or whatever, and everything get canceled for the um, day or whatever. So they're basically backed up, planes are everywhere, mixed up everywhere, so then they have to use like all their reserve flight attendants to fill in the trips and messed up trips from people that got stuck certain places. So in LaGuardia, they went through our whole list, right? So I get this trip, it, I think it's like 11 o'clock in the morning, and it's a two day trip, but it starts later that night around six. So I was supposed to deadhead to DC. I'm not gonna say supposed to, cause I did. I deadheaded to DC, then we worked the trip at 10 p.m. to, where am I right now? I'm at Burlington, Vermont. So we're here right now and we're about to leave. Um, the van actually comes at one. So we're gonna work the trip back to DC and then deadhead back. So I call it a stupid trip because when we got on the flight, like the flight attendant that was on board in the front, she introduced herself to us and was like, hey, um, are you guys based here or whatever? And she said, do you need anything? I was like, yeah, we're based here. I said, we're about to start a trip. We're just deadheaded and, and working the flight to Burlington. And she was like, oh my gosh, you guys got our trip. Cause um, she said, she told us basically that the captain and the first officer, they were gonna be our captains. They somehow took those two flight attendants that was on that plane off the trip. And then they put me and the guy that I'm flying with on the trip from LaGuardia. So we deadheaded to the DC where the two flight attendants were gonna stay the night. And me and him were gonna pick up that trip and fly with the captain first officer to Burlington. Now they all worked the same trip. They told us that it was a five day trip. Sorry, they told us that it was a five day trip. So basically we're overnight in DC to flight attendants because they were scared that the flight attendants were gonna time out. But I was like, wouldn't you take off the captain and first officer also because they're gonna time out as well. But somehow the captain said that, oh, they took them off the trip first and they put them back on the trip. So that leaves us, me and him here. So we're here just to fill in where the flight attendants will be at and where actually when we go back to DC, we're meeting back up with the original flight attendants so they can pick up the rest of their trip with the same captain and first officer. So it's just like stupid. It's like, why would you take off the flight attendants and not take off the captain and the first officer? But anyway, back to the title of my video, right? So I wanted to tell you guys about a time that I was basically sick. I got sick on a plane and I was ghost riding. For those of you that don't know, ghost riding is basically like, it's like an evaluation on board. Um, how can I describe it? So like there's someone that's like, you don't know who it is, they're just sitting as a regular passenger and they're basically critiquing everything you do, evaluating you. So like in a regular job, a normal job, like you would get like monthly or yearly evaluations. So that's what that is, they're just evaluators, but we just don't know who it is. So this, this particular day, I, this particular day I um, left my rollerboard home with all my personal stuff because it was just a Houston turn. We was going there and coming back. So I said, I'm gonna leave it home today. It's whatever, I'll be right back. But lo and behold, I did not know I was gonna get sick. Mother Nature decides to hit me at that moment. So basically I got to the um, LaGuardia Airport and I'm in the parking lot waiting for the shuttle to take me to the terminal. All of a sudden I felt mouth cramping in my stomach and I just knew what time it was at that point. So all I knew is I had to hurry up to the plane and get what I needed to help me continue with my trip because I wasn't gonna call out at that moment basically. So I'm gonna stop saying basically too. So. And so, and um, and clicking my tongue, but anyway, and but anyway, um, here we go again. I got to the plane, I got some pills they had, and some stuff that would help me. And I continue with my trip. And I'm a firm believer that once you get in the air, everything intensifies. So, like, if you got a headache, I feel like it just intensifies, just like the dryness of your skin and this. Your scalp, I feel like, like I always had bad danger problems. But once I started working on planes, the danger just like, it just falls out. Like my head could lean forward on somebody. You just see the danger falling out. So as soon as we take off, I get the, it was a meal flight. So I'm getting the orders and their drink orders and everything. And I get behind the galley curtain and I'm about to pour the drinks and hand out the meals. 
and I just had to kneel because I couldn't stand no more. Like the cramps just started to kick in and just like intensify. And I'm just like, oh my God, why now? <laughs> so somehow, some way, the other flight attendant, he happened to come up and check on me. And he was like, um, you okay? I was like, no, I'm not okay. Like, I can't even stand right now. I can't do the service. Like, I don't know what to do. So basically, he just swooped in and went in like daddy mode. Like, he's West Indian, so he went in daddy mode and made me hot tea, gave me pills. He took over my service. He said, just tell me where each meal and drink go. Just try to pour the drinks from where I was. So basically, I was squatting, and I was just opening the cart in front of me and taking the cups out and putting it up on the took over for me, swooped in, made the tea and everything for me, and told me, he pulled out the Atlas container, put it on the floor, and told me to sit down, and just, after he, like, did the service status, but he told me to sit down and just sit here until you feel better or whatever. So, with the um, main cabin service, it's like, they say the cart weighs up to 250 pounds, so you need somebody to help you bring it up the walkway. So I was like, I know I'm gonna have to get up and help him. So I said, just like literally, just call me when you um about to bring up the cart. I'll come up and do it. So I bring it up and I tried to at least attempt to do the first couple of rows, but he was like, no, go sit down. Just go sit. Like I don't want you passing out or anything. I'm like, I'm not gonna pass out. It's okay. I'll just do it. I'll just suck it all up and do it. He was like, no, just sit. So I sat. And occasionally I tried to come out and check on first class, but all the while I was having like hot flashes and just sweating and burning up. And then all of a sudden I just got cold, like shivering. My like it just got cold out of nowhere. So while I'm sitting back there, I just get this wave of nausea over me, and I hurried up and grabbed the um, trash bag and just puked right over in it. And sometimes I get sick from Mother Nature, and that's what happened that day. So I puked and I was just like, oh God, this is a long flight. Houston flights is like four hours. So we continued on with the day and like two to three hours in, I started to feel better. Maybe more so like three hours in, like near the end, I started to feel better. But then we had like a three to four hour layover and it turned into like a six hour layover. So we were just sitting in the airport because of delays. And then we flew back, but I could not wait to get home. So I'ma fast forward, <laughs> fast forward like a week later, I get a call from my, basically my job. I saw the area code, so I knew it was like somebody from my job basically because of the headquarters where it's based at. So I let, I let them go to the, <laughs> answering machine and then I called back after I listened to the message and so basically she started the call and was like oh Brittany we just wanted to tell you that you were basically ghost ghostwriting on your flight to Houston when she said Houston I said hold up so before you say anything on that flight I was sick and the guy had to take over for me she was like I'm glad you told me that because it explains a lot of the notes that he um the person that ghostwriting me left so I was like, okay. But she said, but overall, you did another great job because this is my second time being ghostwriting. And she was like, oh, God, hold on. <laughs> that's my alarm to start getting ready. Well, I already took a shower and everything, but that's just like, you know, pay attention to the time. But anyway, where was I? She said that it was a good review. Like, it was good. You did the main parts. All the main parts were good. They just noticed that she wasn't very visible in the cabin. So I'm like, yeah, that's why, basically. I told her about him. She said when she calls him, she's going to tell him, thank you once again on my behalf. But she also sympathized with me because she said she goes through the same thing when it's that time for her. So she ver she sympathized with me. And basically, I was just happy that I had a great review because it could count against you and affect your job. So now, a couple months later, this is why I'm telling this story today, because I actually just saw the guy, like, a week ago, and I was passing the airport, and I just stopped, I said, wait, wait, oh my God, I just, I was so embarrassed to how I stopped him, but I was like, wait, wait, oh my God, I was waiting to see you, I've been looking all over for you, but not necessarily looking all over for him, but like, keeping an eye out, like, am I ever going to see him again? And I said, you know that flight we had to Houston where I got sick, you know, we were ghost riding, he said, yes. Oh my God, I was like, why this flight? I said, me too. 
I was thinking the same thing. So, he was like, that they told him that a passenger even heard everything that was going on. They was like, oh, he took her to sit, he gave her pills and everything. I'm like, who saw all of this behind the curtain? But it had to be the nosy first classers. So, he was like, I'm just glad it was a good review. And she told me that you told her about how I helped you out or whatever. I said yes, because anybody else probably wouldn't have helped me like the way you did. Like, I'm just so happy that I was flying with you that day. But anyway, guys, um, I never went sick before. And that's why I wanted to tell you about I never went sick before. And I was scared to go sick in the middle of a trip because... I will be stuck in Houston basically and have to see a doctor there basically and have to get my own way back home. So I was like, you know what? I'ma just, you know, suck it all up. Just keep doing this trip so I can go back home and not get the sick um, occurrence or whatever happens and go home. And I don't know what's gonna pass, so I didn't really need to see a doctor. Like, go through this all the time. So just wanted to share this story with you guys that you know it's okay to get sick and you know I mean it's not okay to get sick but just wanted to share this story with you about being sick and ghost riding if you have any questions or any gaps in my story that you need filled you know just leave them below I will answer but thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you again